we're gonna be so i just got some quotes back today the ballpark for this first order is sixty thousand dollars for our display cases just the boxes just the boxes to put the fucking protein in so is like what what does that mean in terms of cost per box cost per box right now is looking at about twelve dollars per box fucking serious are you joking twelve dollars per box twelve dollars yeah insane wow yeah okay uh costco update where are we yeah, so as we're coming to uh, as we're coming to an end of this fiscal year, let me go in silent mode here. Uh, as we're coming to an end uh, on this fiscal year, the biggest goal right now, I guess, was we transition to next next fiscal is the Costco contract. So they ended up going forward with a higher number of units than what they, we originally were requested for, for. The test run. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. So this is going to be in approximately twenty to thirty store warehouses across Canada. There's 108 warehouses total, so it's about like a quarter or so of the uh, the warehouses. They want fifteen thousand units total across the board, and uh, we're in the final stages of just designing. Uh, like we need kind of special bags and boxes and pallet designs and everything for how to make the product look good on the shelves in Costco and they are very particular with all that kind of stuff, mm-hmm. right? Like they want it three way shoppable so that not only is the product displayed in the aisle with like a full shoppable front face, but then when also that skid is at the end of an aisle that you can have like people shopping from all sides. Mm-hmm. So that, yeah, that's kind of like the exciting news uh, with that. We're in the, we're planning on shipping in the last week of this month for a mid July arrival interesting Mm -hmm. and what are the numbers on this order looking like right now yeah so in terms of revenue we're looking at approximately eight hundred thousand dollars or so for this order which is which is a great kind of first order and this Mm -hmm. is just a test run yeah um and this is only over a 12 week period a 12 week week, they call it a rotation right Mm -hmm. so they typically bring in rotations every six months but when they do trial periods they do a three uh, a three month rotation that's what we have going on here and uh the the costs are pretty heavy on it as well but we're hoping that with a successful test run of only three months in 20 to 30 warehouses that if we are accepted for a full run that'll be a 50 million dollar contract overnight mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so um around eight hundred thousand dollars of revenue mm-hmm. we're going to be profiting about 15, 16 and a half percent about is that, that yeah is that, that's okay. where about we're about where we're about <laughs> where we're at about right now okay um so maybe like 150k is that what it, is that what it's lining up to be yeah ballpark figure something like that yeah, yeah. yeah. um okay very good um in terms of the next step with Costco, did they outline what they're looking for in terms of next steps or is it simply test as well? We're in 106 stores. Yeah, it's not necessarily a guarantee in terms of moving forward into every single store in Canada. <laughs> yeah. But if we, I had assume if we sell out during that three month period, that's exactly what, that's their best case scenario. Yeah, and right. Then, and then we get their we're in all of the stores. We've already had Costco approach us to, uh, for a contract for all stores, mm-hmm. which was 600,000 units, yeah. six month period or yeah. six month, six month rotation yeah. for a total of 120 or 1.2 million units a year, a year, mm-hmm. which would equate to around $51 million in revenue. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's pretty huge. Yeah, that was that was in the time when they had one of their existing protein suppliers at the time go bankrupt, and well, we don't know that. That's true. We don't know that for sure. We don't know that for sure, but that's the word on the street. The word on the street, yeah. I, I should say. Yeah. Um, Which is what we've been told by industry insiders. Yeah. Also, seeing that you can't find those products anymore. Oh, oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah you can't. Literally, yeah, you literally can't. I tried find that brand online. Really, yeah. Walmart. Interesting. Like non-existent. You, non-existent. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. Um, High likelihood. <clears throat> right. Yeah. So that that is me piecing the puzzle together. Right. Yeah. That's not like for sure. Yeah. And they, so they needed it. They had a, a gap to fill that yes. was urgent. Yeah. Uh, the, the way that the way that Costco designs their product categories is like, let's say that you walk into a Walmart or whatever, you're gonna have. 20 products in a certain product category, right? A whole bunch of different selection. Whereas with Costco, they have like 
two or three products per category, right? Mm. So when it comes to like whey protein powders, they have three products. They have one isolate, one concentrate, and one usually either like a lower quality mix or they have a mix with like a collagen powder or some kind of like more of like a trending product would be that third one. Right. So this would be for the Canadian protein brand because a lot lot of things, another thing as well is that a lot of people, when I talk about the Costco contract, they assume that's Kirkland. I get the same thing all the time. Yeah. They're like, oh, you're going to be like a Kirkland brand. And why I wouldn't be opposed to that, right? Because obviously Kirkland has a good reputation. Having the Canadian protein brand in there is huge. Right. Because we're looking at essentially this first order as a marketing campaign for sure right the number of people that walk in through the doors in costco alone and the uh, the other thing as well is that right when you walk in the first kind of shoppable aisle is your supplements and protein powders which is kind of weird it it must be their higher margin or i I could see that yeah i don't know why i don't know why or maybe not i mean they they do operate on what a 15 percent margin i remember seeing yeah that was a while ago but maybe things have changed average not fixed on every yeah, single okay. product though I right can't imagine that being their higher margin products um well i'd imagine something like your vitamins minerals and like pharmaceutical products like tylenol whatever i'd imagine those being higher margin yeah, for sure but they don't sell that in the aisle ways do they sell tylenol and over-the-counter yeah. medic yeah medic, really literally the first aisle that's shoppable maybe yeah um because as you walk so as you walk in you have all the promo items as you walk in the things that they're actually trying to push the most of then the next thing that you walk by in every single costco is like your diamonds and your tvs and your bracelets and your watches like all that like really high ticket item things that i'm assuming are extremely uh, high margin but you walk by that as you enter the store you walk by that little jewelry and tea and electronics section and as you head over to the other the first kind of like shoppable aisle that's your pharmaceutical items and your protein powders people mm-hmm. usually like start shopping there yeah. and they make their way kind of like around the store in one big loop yeah um so that's that's really good and, and essentially like also when you're in the checkout line as well because like often they have long checkout lines mm-hmm. as the carts kind of go back they go back towards the protein powder yeah. section, yeah. right? So if people are just there, they're going to be right next to the skid of our products and they'll yeah. be like, oh, this is a great looking product. Da, da, da. Okay, yeah. so go into the costs associated with actually doing this in terms of, you know, I guess the, not necessarily our costs. We already know it's where we're going to be operating around a 15%, mm-hmm. 15 or 16 and a half percent margin, somewhere around there. Yep. But, uh, the fees associated with the initial order getting into Costco for people that might find this kind of interesting because I tell you what, the pay to play mm-hmm. strategy of these big box retailers is crazy. I know. Yeah. So do you want exact numbers or just like, I, the, like ty- the types I, of fees? I think no, like like numbers. I think let's, let's throw some numbers, but I think it'd be interesting for people to actually know yeah. what it costs to play with the big box retailers yeah to so their, to play with their, their game yeah so we provide products for example to rexall which obviously rexall is not as big as costco yeah. but <clears throat> even and they were a little difficult to set up with in the first place but they are when i had some pushback with uh with them again probably about a, a year ago or so they were willing to negotiate they were able to kind of adjust some of their policies mm-hmm. and like they usually want to order by the case so they're like no 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 like, we need to sell to you by the skids like only higher volumes um we need extended lead times we mm-hmm. need payments faster like i was able to negotiate all these mm-hmm. terms and they ended up accept- accepting all of them um they have more wiggle room costco's like no, here's the Costco way. Either yeah. take it or we're going to move right on to the next company. Yeah, it's it's, it's wild. It's cutthroat. There's so much more cutthroat. Yeah. And so the first thing is that, so beyond just the actual cost of the goods, so you have the protein powders for, for us, protein powders, and the bag that the product is in, the next kind of like cost associated with it is your... Your, your display, right? Mm. Like what the products are actually displayed in. Mm. For e-commerce, when we're selling the majority of our business online, we just throw it into a generic box, put some packing yeah. paper tape and send it on its way, right? Yeah. There's no like display aspect to it. Here, so we have to spend, um, it, we're gonna be, so I just got some quotes back today. The ballpark for this first order is $60,000 for our display cases. Just the boxes. Just the put boxes the to put the in. fucking protein in so, is yeah, like 60,000. So what does that 000. mean in terms of cost per box cost per box right now is looking at about twelve dollars per is box it fucking serious are 12, you joking twelve dollars per box twelve dollars yeah 
insane wow yeah and how many how many units can we fit per box was three it like three that's three. it so only four three? four dollars per unit oh, i know now as we scale i didn't think it was going to be that high, that hefty as we scale higher yeah the cost per box actually will drop substantially because there's an upfront tooling fee right which is which significantly increases the price of this okay. once they have our prints and tools whatever i don't know how this stuff actually works yeah, yeah, in a, in a kind of print shop like bags yeah same way they, they he said like once you have that set up once then there's you're not char you're not paying that fee again you need to negotiate that if we move that we can take the tooling hmm yeah okay so you need to tell them like if we're paying for this tooling like, yeah that's part of the agreement like that's our fucking tooling that's fair remind yeah. remind me after this call actually yeah. to uh to, to i've done that with uh with different companies before yeah it's, yeah. Good, it's a good idea if we're paying for it if, yeah if you don't want us to pay for it then mm -hmm. then you you assume the cost yeah and that's it and then the second aspect of for it yeah the second aspect as well is the cost of the freight right if we're going to be able to fill up a truck full of these boxes and they're all laid flat but the truck is full the shipping price will be cheaper yeah. right so we have to do, do ltl right now which is cheap which is more expensive per unit yeah so what about the what about the cost of for example the newsletter mm -hmm. the the cost of being even able to display stuff this, yeah. is, this is more so what i'm talking about yeah so you're going to be able to get one so in terms of the displays in store you're going to be able to get uh one skid spot on ground floor per flavor included so two skids we're gonna have two skids per store nice. yeah one chocolate one vanilla got it okay. yeah um in the actual aisle ways yeah. and then there's above additional skids that yeah. as that one gets emptied this yeah. this one comes forward so just essentially one display and pretty much yeah. every single product in costco only has one palette yeah. section yeah it's rare to ever see two pallets of like one product got it um so that's the first thing so that's included the they suggest to you you don't have to do this but they suggest to you to pay extra to be located at the end of the aisles as well so in addition to the two skid spots in the actual aisle to be at the end now this is only for our test run it'll be even more expensive if we're in every single store across canada but to be located at the end of the aisles what they call end caps and those are usually very shoppable as people come around it's three the skids are three-way shoppable mm -hmm. we're paying fifty two thousand dollars just to have the products having a second skid located at the end of the aisle like total fifty two thousand dollars second skid a second skid of per flavor yeah so we're gonna have we're gonna be inside the actual oh, aisle. So we're gonna be in the aisle and then a second skid. Yeah. Outside. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, so okay, per store is gonna have four technically four pallets at a time displayed, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. yeah. So chocolate vanilla and then chocolate and vanilla at the end of the aisle, and apparently now they sent me some statistics back in the day. I forget exactly the conversion rate, but it's substantially higher when you're located at the end cap. Makes sense. Obviously, it's probably also a sales pitch for them. They want you to buy the, those spaces, but. Even me, now I'm not an avid Costco shopper, but I've been there enough times to know yeah. that the turnaround for those for sure. things is way higher. Of course. Yeah, I, I even catch myself and like, oh, that fucking granola looks good. Okay, I'll just yeah. throw it in there. Yeah, but it, I, it but I don't actually go down the granola aisle because yeah. I don't think to myself, oh, I want granola or cereal. Totally makes sense. Right. That's, um, uh, that's actually kind of crazy, man, to yeah. be honest with you. So that's that marketing cost. Um, then the newsletter. Then the newsletter. So yeah, essentially, another newsletter going out. Yeah. So they also sell spots in there. So they don't pay for their marketing themselves. They have each of their suppliers paying for the spots in their email blasts. We have to do this. No, we don't have to. Oh, we don't have to. Do no, it. I was no. under the impression we have to do. No, this. they just really recommend it for new products. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. So this one is four thousand four hundred dollars per email for. <laughs> The products yeah that's fucking crazy right. and and for for anybody that's going to listen to this it's not a newsletter like hey everyone we now sell canadian protein no it's like mixed in with a bunch of other products it's like it's, hey yeah here's all the either products that are on sale yeah. or new products in the store yeah. here's the 200 of them mm -hmm. and we'll feature yours there craziness yeah um, I looked at one of them and they do usually feature like the new products up front. Okay. But they said that that, I guess I asked them, I'm like, can we be on like, the first page or whatever? They're like, there's, there's no like guarantee for that. They're like, we can, you can pay extra to be on the first page. But other than that, like we typically feature new products up front and then sale products usually a little bit later on. How much was it to be featured? Oh, on it was some, it was something ridiculous. Was it really? Um, I think the feature, the featured product was something like 25 grand, like per email or something. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> like literally like <laughs> the one serious? that's like larger first thing that you see like yeah it was an email it, Fuck, that might not be i wonder when i built it into the costing model it actually didn't make sense well here, here's here's what i'm thinking right how many emails do they did they send you any kind of insights into their open rates and stuff? Um, or their, or open rates, no, but they did say that they had I think it was over a million people on their on their Canadian you said Costco. Five million. five million, okay, yeah. Um five million people. That's yeah. what I'm thinking. I'm getting what's our open rate right now? Dave would know specifically. I want to say it's between 10, 15 percent. So, it, okay, call it 10 percent. If we have an open rate of, if they have an open rate of the same, say, say it's even higher, say it's probably 20 percent. That's five, actually where I think I got the million from a 5 million email list with 1 million open rate. That's what it was. It might be worth just here's 25 grand, get it in front of yeah. a million people yeah. in Canada. That's 1 30th of yeah. like the country. Literally. It's insane. Yeah. It's like our existing customer base. I know. Maybe even more. I know. Yeah, like historically, have we had more than a million customers on Canadian oh, protein? Yeah, way more. Yeah. 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 Um, so I guess see if you have, see if they can get any kind of analytical data on sure. their newsletter. Actually, I'm going to make notes of these things so I don't forget. Yeah. Here. Because if if uh, if it's that much more, our open rate. Dave just messaged us. Our open rate is fuck twenty percent. Oh, there that's you go. High. Yeah, Dave, is that? Uh, I would imagine that's actually a pretty good open rate. Does it have stats in terms of what what's considered a good open rate in uh, in our email uh, newsletter? I, yeah, I remember eat, yeah eating. I remember reading things that are like the average open rates for a lot of these like e commerce brands, like three to five percent. Yeah, yeah, so fucking twenty percent. That's pretty good. Yeah. We have a really high returning customer rate. Mm -hmm. That's one thing when I've spoken to a few like Shopify um, support. It's gotten bumped up. Yeah. 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 Um, like I told you, like we have um, kind of like one friend in our uh, in our friend group that works as like a Shopify expert person. Mm. And so she was kind of curious about some things. And I was talking about like, uh, and she asked about like the returning customer rate and something like 70% or whatever. She's like, what? That's fucking crazy. Usually yeah, you yeah. see like nothing even close to that. Yeah. 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 Interesting. Um, so featured product on email on the first page. Yeah. And then the other thing that I was going to make a note of was I literally just said it, or, said it earlier about the boxes of uh, yeah. tooling box tooling. Yeah. If we own the tooling, it is significantly hotter in your office than it, it out is. there. I know yeah, I yeah. fucked up putting these big windows here, man. <laughs> I'm telling you, um, yeah, it's getting warm. So, so that help you breathing on me the whole time. <laughs> if, it makes you feel any, if it makes you feel any better, this uh, mic kind of stinks from Scott's mouth. Um, and Scott's. Probably. Mm -hmm. um, Gross. Does it actually? That doesn't smell. Get out of here. Um, so I think that's pretty much yeah, it. so we have so that's the cost of the products, cost of the bags, boxes, the displays, the uh, email blast, and the last kind of like cost that we had to build into the um, pricing model, the financial model for Costco was their return model, their return um, policy, and the discount policy. So uh, what that means is essentially they have Costco has a one hundred percent satisfaction guaranteed, no matter fucking what. Like you can take a product open it up chew on it put it back in a bag and bring it back and they don't fucking care they'll, they'll mm -hmm. return it right so Which what is tough for a, a product that's consumable right a consumable product that's not like that yeah it, it's that's a tough one right like you have you'll have some things like i don't know like headphones that yeah you can bring them back and repackage them and probably reuse them at some, some point probably, right yeah. but like a consumable product you can't yeah right so the one thing we have working in our favor as a consumable item is that we like if you have any of the items that are frozen like there's another huge percentage of people like that will take a frozen product and then go somewhere else in the store and then leave it on like that shelf right you know uh, and like that's still considered like a loss is like a it da really? damaged item right oh, man. so the damage rate for frozen products is like significantly higher is because like really? that happens all the fucking time think, yeah. think about that from uh from a consumer's perspective, that is, I guess, earth conscious mm -hmm. or, you know, has a, you know, I guess a yearning for sustainability, right? 
think about the, the impact that people don't realize when they do stuff like that is probably actually quite more significant than what you're even doing in order to live a more sustainable life. Mm-hmm. Right. So and then it's even actually, that's a shocking fucking revelation. I know. I didn't I, actually realize. And that. like, think about as well. So our overall damage and return rate is pr- anywhere between like two and a half to, uh, sorry, one and a half to two and a half percent, which is fucking high actually. Right. But if you imagine, let's say for example, that uh, one of these like frozen goods companies, let's say it's 5%, right? You have to think that that's going to impact the cost of the product, I was right? Going to say that. So if people are like, "Oh, like things are increasing cost, whatever," but then you're like literally going and damaging products and leaving them around, whatever, like that will force the manufacturer to bump their price to accommodate that increased damage yeah. rate. So you want right? to compare about food price? Complain about food prices? Maybe you shouldn't complain when you buy a food product and try to take every single thing that you pick off a shelf back or damage it on purpose or take it out of a freezer, leave Mm -hmm. it on another shelf, thinking that, oh, hey, well, I just don't wanna walk back to the freezer because I'm fucking lazy. So I'm just gonna leave it here. But now that that's considered damaged Mm -hmm. and basically garbage, yeah, people like us, we have to roll that into the cost of a product that someone's actually buying that's going to cost now quite a bit more. It's unbelievable. I didn't actually realize it. It makes sense. Mm-hmm. So I had to build in the in the pricing model. The because that's just going to go in the garbage, which is fucking sad. I know. Yeah. Wow. Know. Okay. Anyway. Um. So yeah, you can't like donate that to yeah. like like if you have a bag of apples and one apple has gone rotten. Okay. Yeah, you can donate the rest of the apples to a food shelter or something. But what are you doing with the frozen item? Like you have to throw the entire thing, right? Yeah. Even us, when we have damaged bags, I, I have actually contacted shelters being like, Hey, mm-hmm. can we give these products away? And they won't take them, Yeah, which is kind of fucking crazy. Like mm-hmm. here's free food. Yeah. That's not really, what do you call that? When you food can spoil perishable, perishable. It's not perishable food. Yeah. It's just been opened. Mm-hmm. So you'd rather that person like what? go dumpster diving Mm -hmm. it's fucking weird i know so anyway so i built in our uh on the high end of our return rate just assuming that i don't know maybe costco customers are pickier maybe they have a higher standard whatever it is like i'm just assuming for to be conservative the higher return rate built into our financial model uh and because we have to cover that return 100 percent. and the very last thing is the discount coverage for their discount policy so essentially after the 12 week program for rotation that we're in if we don't sell a hundred percent of the products they're the remaining products they don't ship them back to us they don't throw them out they're going to put them on sale and they'll continue to put them on sale until everything sells out so after 12 uh, 12 weeks, they're going to put the products, let's say, for example, so they're probably going to retail the product for actually, I, I won't even say it because I don't know exactly what they're retailing it for. Um, but let's say, for example, they take $10 off the retail price, each product that then they sell for $10 less, we have to cover the $10. <laughs> right, then they'll have that for 12, another 12 week, week rotation, any products that's still remaining, they're gonna put $20 off, whatever products sell for $20 off, we have to cover that 20 bucks and so on and so forth. Crazy. Right. So the whole idea is that you really want to try to sell out within the window of the rotation. The cost to play at these big retailers is substantial. Mm-hmm. Done. 